Hello guys, you're welcome to Photographics Academy. A very big shout out to Tumelo Prince. He's far away from South Africa. He submitted this image like we requested, so we can uh, do a, a tutorial around it and show him the much he could do with his job. So this is the first time I'm bringing the job into Photoshop. I'm going to be showing you my take on how much I can do on this image using just done for you touching action of course you must have heard me talk about done for you for some time now amazing amazing action that will have right here for you you can just go to the description of the video and you will definitely see how you can access the action and this is a very important announcement we started a campaign lately where we allow our followers our fans to send in their jobs and we give them a very big shout out here on YouTube. So it's still open if you are interested in submitting your own images for the same purpose. Just go straight to the description of the video. You will see exactly how you would do that. So without wasting your time, let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crop the image. Of course, I'm going to crop it 4x5, 8x10, depending on what you want. No, that wasn't. Okay, so. Excuse me. All right, so I'll crop it this way. Nope. Yeah, right here. Press enter. So the next thing I want to do is I want to quickly make a selection of the background. Select subject. So there's a trick I want to show you. There's a particular kind of blur that I want to mimic in this image. But I'm going to show you how you can achieve that same kind of look using combining just two types of blur in your photoshop let's get started so i'm going to select inverse uh duplicate this right click and press layer via cut make a selection again and go to your filter go to blur go to radial blur yeah here so make sure you are at a very low number so i'll, I'll try somewhere around four and i'll press enter because it will be in the best i'll press enter to see if it gives me exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, so I think this is too much. I'm going to take it lower. So I'll go to blur, radial blur. So we'll try three. Three should work. Beautiful. So the next thing I want to do, remember we said combining two types of blur. I'm going to go to my filter, go to my blur gallery, pick up my tilt shift. So I'm going to drag this down. Yeah, I'm going to drag the points down like this. So we'll have that beautiful gradation in the blurry and the uh, depth of field. So I'm going to increase the blur just slightly like that. So make sure you do not lose those waves on your leaves. So if you blur too much, you start losing the waves. So just slightly, yeah, in a way that the waves are still there. So I wanted to mimic a motion kind of blur that high end lenses give at a very low aperture somewhere around here then we wave it again but i want to keep it just slightly here nice okay so this is cool i think i want more blow but i'm going to blow it out a little more you know what let's keep it somewhere around 28 that wouldn't work somewhere around 35 38 Okay, so this is good. Press enter. Now we are done blurring our background. So you can as well introduce a color lookup table to that background just to paint that separation. Uh, something that will just darken it down slightly. Beautiful. So you just look for anything that would work. I think I like what this one is doing. So this is before, this is after. I love this one. So keep to this. So. I'm done with my background for now, so I'm going to flatten it all. Let's quickly introduce our done for you action. So I'm going to go straight to this place, pick up my done for you action, go to done for you retouch and place. So I'm going to stay somewhere around 1.0. Yeah, just to get the maximum result I can. This is beautiful. This is amazing. So let me just quickly show you before and after. So this is before. This is after, this is before, this is after. Isn't that beautiful? Amazing action we'll have right there. So the next thing I want to do, I'm just going to quickly apply my other that I'm born on the face, the skin, and all of that. Just to bring more dimensions to the image. 
quickly. Just like that, zoom out. So we are doing nice. So have before, we have after. So I'm going to reduce this definitely. Yeah. So we'll have our dimensions on our image. Well, after I think it's still too much, we'll bring it down a little. So the next thing I want us to do quickly is to just darken down her dress. I noticed some part of the dress are not entirely as dark as the other part. So I think I like the black here. We are just adjusting for here for now. Okay. Better this by maybe like six. Then just take up your curls and darken it down. Nice. So you can now extend it to all the dress. So you have all the dress darkened down equally now. Okay, so have we uh, bring it in. So right click, feather, do the same thing. Yeah, press enter, deselect. So we have a very nice separation. The clothes is now glittering in very dark black. So I have some actions here our preset color gradients that I would want to try out in the image and see if it gives us a very nice result. So I'm going to quickly test this one. Oh, this is nice. But I, think, I don't think I'm going to use that. So I'm just going to check something else. Oh, this is beautiful. Okay, so for your bonus, we are giving out this action pack. We are giving out this action pack for you for free. So if you watched the video till this point, you definitely must have seen the password to receive the action pack. So you just download the action pack, load it up in your Photoshop and just test it out on your own shot to see the one that works better for you. You can even decide to mix it up. So I'm going to just bring this down a little. I like what it's doing. I'm going to flatten that and try something else. This is nice. Okay, so I think I like what I have here. I like what I have here. This is beautiful. So I'm going to just bring it down slightly. Slightly like that. Nice. I love I love the way the colors are looking. So I'm going to close it up together and do one or two minor adjustments to the background. So I'm going to go to my hue and saturation, pick up my hand picker to select the yellows and just Try moving the sliders around to see if we can get something stronger or better. So I like it somewhere around the orange, the yellow area. So it gives it that warm tone. We'll darken it down slightly. Those move stuff around. So this is the before, this is after. Reduce the opacity. So the next thing I want us to do is to quickly color grade her skin. I want us to quickly color grade her skin. And to do that, it's very simple. We'll just pick up probably a solid color. So I need her to have something very warm. Yeah, or something calm somewhere around here. I'll press enter. I'll make a selection of her skin. Now, this will really blow your mind. So if you look at the image, you're going to notice that we are having a lot of colors that will look similar. For example, if we take this into our color range, you're going to notice that it will also be picking not just her skin, but every other part of the image. Let's quickly go through that so you see it. What's color range? So you're going to notice the selections are running around and all of that. So one thing I want you to do is just to delete the mask yet. Then make a selection of the sub layer via cut. So we'll have the subject on a different layer. Now you can use this to make your selection and you are sure you are picking just the skin tone. Do you notice the way it just forgot about the background? Why? Because we are making our selections just on the layer that has her skin tone. So this is how we pick that. So we can change this to color, we can change it to soft light. I like to combine the two or even three. So I'm just going to drop this down. Notice it on her hair. So I'm going to take it away from the hair. Quickly print it off the hair. Like that. So you use your color to get a uniform skin tone across her skin. And you use soft light to bring in drama and all of that. 
I think I like it like this before, after. Reduce the opacity. Duplicate the layer. Changes to soft lights. Or even try multiply. Let's see what multiply is going to do for us. Okay, so multiply gives us a darker skin tone. So it brings the highlights down and all of that. So we reduce the colors a little more. So let's group these two together and see what we have. So this is before, this is after. Let me zoom in. So this is before, this is after. I'm just going to reduce the opacity by all. Nice. Okay, so we are getting there gradually. Enter. So I'm just quickly going to my camera or make a little adjustment. Probably darken my background down a little. Let's see how that goes. I'm going to go to the map area, select my background. I just want to reduce the exposure on the background so that the image itself can stand out. Simple. So just use our mask template. So have our background selected. Go back to the exposure area and just bring it down just like that. So do not make it look so unrealistic. So just bring it down to the point where it still looks very realistic. You can even increase the highlight just to bring drama to the image here like that. Here's the highlight. Here's the exposure. Yeah, something like that. So go back to your normal adjustment layer. Probably open up the shadows or darken stalls down. Have the highlights here. And decide to go for a cooler uh, effect. But I think I prefer it warm. So we'll just stay somewhere around that safe area. Nice. So we can equally bring in our uh, vignette effect just to make things very much more separated. Nice. Okay, so that probably put it down slightly. Beautiful. Beautiful. So let's go and just increase a little bit of saturation on stuffs. Yeah. Go back to the color mixer. Check what the greens have for you. Okay, so just change the hue entirely. Just give it that that entire warm feel. Yeah, nice. Press enter. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sharpen the whole image. So I'll go straight to my door for you one more time. Go to sharpen. And we'll have a very detailed shot. Very detailed shot before, after. Very detailed. And we are good to go. So just restore us up a little. Okay, so we are done. Done. Done, done, done. Okay, so this is the image when we came in. Imagine the drastic change. This is the image after we retouched our image. So simply, we just use our done for you to retouch the image. And we did just some manual color grading to the image. That was how we were able to bring it to this level. I feel I can even bring in a little more drama by just creating an extra lightning from here just to mimic the sunlight. So I'm going to pick up something bright down there do the same over here maybe a yellow tone yeah change the blend mode to whatever that will give you the effect you want it will just slightly move i was distracting i think i like this can even bring it inwards a little just increase it to spill slightly on your image and you reduce the overall capacity just like that. So I'll have before, I'll have after. Slightly. And bring it in a little more. By increasing your scale. Just to bring in the effect on the face. And we are good to go. So this is before. This is after. Reduce it slightly more. And even make it a little bit hazy. Just to bring in those dramas. By the snipes. Beautiful. That will just add a little contrast. Beautiful. So have before, we have after, before, after, and we are able to create a stunning image. Thank you so much for watching this amazing video. Like I said, we are still open for your images. Just send it to us and we'll give you a very big shout out here and show you the ways you can improve the shots by just doing one or two things in Photoshop. Thank you so much for watching this amazing video. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the subscription on the notification button rather to get notified every single time we drop a new video. Thank you.